In this FireTech instructional video, we will be taking a show created in Finale 3D and exporting the script from Finale 3D and loading that into the FireTech system through the FTQ99NX controller. You can find the Finale 3D software at finale3d.com. Here is our Finale 3D show used in our previous video, Basic Addressing. And we have five positions up front and one in the back for shells. If we look closely at the current script, we can see that it is only addressed across four modules from our previous video. However, we want to address this so that we have six modules, one for each position. To do this, we can go back into addressing and address show, and we can leave the positions here for each slat is restricted to a single position. But what we need to change under the constraints is each module is restricted to a single section and position. So by selecting position here, it will force at least one module to each position. Okay, and here are the results. We are now using six modules across our 62 cues. To export the script, we are going to go to File, Export, Export Firing System Script Files. And this window will pop up to let us select the script format. And we're gonna leave it here as the default for FireTech. It's ready to export the file. We hit OK. And it's going to save it on our hard drive. So we got to select a location to save this file. The file name is going to match the show name in our Finale 3D. So in this case, it's trial1.csv. We're going to export that to our hard drive. All right, so here's our chosen folder in the trial1.csv file. We can open this up in a spreadsheet application and take a look at it. So here's the script. We can see in the top left corner, or in the first row, is the title of the script, trial1. Here's our headers, and then you can see across here for modules, we've got six modules. We can see this is the rails. It's mostly one rail until you get to module six and we use more rails. Here's our pins, firing time. And over here is the product information. And again, this was all based off of the generic effects in Finale 3D. This all looks correct, so we'll close this. Now what we need to do is to transfer this over to a USB drive. So I've got a USB drive plugged into the computer. I'm going to drag this over to the USB folder and retitle this as script.csv. As a reminder, script.csv is the required file name when loading the script to the FireTech system. So we'll go ahead and close our USB folder and then remove our USB drive. Here we have the FTQ99SX controller and now that we have the script loaded onto this USB drive, we can power up the controller and let it go through its startup tests. And then once it is running, if we press the script button, it'll bring up the script menu, letting us know that there is no script loaded, but that we need to load a file with the name script.csv, which we have on this USB drive we can plug into the data port. As soon as it loads the script in, we can see on the screen the script name trial1.csv. It tells us that we have 62 pyro events, no DMX events, and it requires six modules. And right now it's telling us that there's no modules connected. Please connect the modules. Okay, well let's start up some modules. And they'll go through their startup test. 
and then the screen will ask us what ID to assign to the modules. So I could change this, but this is already at one, so I'll hit OK. This one's already assigned two. I don't have to acknowledge OK, I can just leave it, and this screen will time out in a number of seconds and self-assign that to module two. So we'll use this other module here that was previously used in another show and connected to another controller. Once it starts up, we'll see on the screen in the upper left corner above the wireless icon this 279A. That indicates that uh, it was previously on a custom network, and we can also see that the module was set to channel 12. So first let's take care of the custom network. We're going to restart the module, and once it starts up, we're going to hold down both the forward and the backward button. It'll bring up the wireless reset menu where we can select to reset the wireless. And it will restart, but once it's done, it's back to the standard FireTech wireless mesh network. All right, we can see now that we've got an SE up in the top corner, so that's for the standard wireless network and we can reset the ID um, by using the blue backwards button to set the ID to three and hit the forward green button to acknowledge that. And then we'll see here that the module is assigned to ID three. We give it a little bit of time and it will network with the controller and we'll see the S for slave next to the ID. All right, now we've got three modules connected. Let's go ahead and start up these remaining three and let them power on. And now if we go back to the main menu on the controller, we can see in the green bar it says three modules. Eventually, once they all connect, it will say modules six. And now we have module four, module five, and module six. And I guess we can show you on the screen, this shows module five and an S for slave, meaning that it's networked to the controller. And we can go back to the script menu on the controller. And now it's giving us options to upload the script to individual modules or to all the modules. So we'll go ahead and hit R2 to load the script to all the modules. And we can see the progression as it loads to each module. And on the module screens, we can see a P telling us that a program has been loaded into the modules. And the controller is showing us that everything uploaded without errors. If we go back to the main controller screen, it does indicate that we have errors and we can use the next error button to see those. And what it's telling us is that on each module, you know, we don't have any igniters connected, nor do we have the rails connected for this demo. And we can cycle through the different modules here and see the same set of errors for each module. If we had other errors, it might tell us low voltage, a low battery, connection issue, but here everything is actually looking good other than the fact that we have no igniters plugged in for this demo. So now assuming that we've checked everything and we're good for the show, we'll go ahead and turn the key to put the system into ARM. And we'll see that it's providing status that all the modules have armed. And we can also see that on the module screen as well. The screen is flashing and it states armed. And then we can simply push the play button to put the show into play.
And when the show's all over, or if you need to stop it, you can push the play button to put the system into pause. And if we're all done, we can turn the key to go back to test. The system shows us that we've safely gone back into test. This is also reflected on the module screens if they're back in test. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off module three here. But let's say the show is done, um, and now you wanna just delete the script from the modules in the system. So we can go back to the module menu, and it gives us the option to delete all if we hold down R4. So we'll do that, and we can see that the delete was complete without any errors. And on those modules that are still on, that P is no longer on the modules, indicating that there's no program loaded. Now we had module three turned off, so it didn't get the script deleted. We can see that the P is still there. So if that's the case, from an individual module, you can hold down the backward button and go into the USB host mode. And then if you cancel the first screen, it will then go to the screen asking you if you want to delete the script. And from there you can select delete to delete the script from a single module. We hope this video was helpful for loading scripts with the FTQ99NX controller. The operations for the FTQ99SX smaller handheld controller are very similar, if not identical. And we hope you noticed that a lot of information is right at your fingertips with the FireTech firing system.